A few months ago, I set out on the rather ambitious challenge of creating a game that can seamlessly render infinite space without loads or transitions. Typically in video games, you'll have a transition period between the in-space and on-planet areas, and I wanted to see if we could get rid of that. But of course, that's really hard. The way modern video cards work is you have a maximum render distance and a minimum render distance. You can set this distance to be in inches, feet, yards, miles, or light years, but you can't render anything further or nearer than the maximum and minimum render distance. Video games get around this in a number of ways. The most common one is to have a skybox, which renders far away objects at a much smaller scale and then later renders nearer objects at a larger scale for the illusion of a larger world. The trouble with this method is that typically the player can't interact with the skybox. I solved this problem by creating multiple render levels, which phase in and out depending on the distance from the camera to the object being rendered. In Codename Infinite, the player has the ability to move seamlessly from the surface of the planet into outer space, and this is accomplished by dynamically rendering the terrain of the planet with these render levels to make sure that each part of the planet's surface is rendered inside the minimum and maximum render distance. Here you can see the different colors representing the parts of the terrain that are rendered in different render levels. The task of rendering large worlds also runs into problems with floating point numbers, the format of numbers that computers use to store information about distances. It's very good at adding two very small numbers or at adding two very large numbers, but if you add a very large number to a very small number, the very small number is shifted out and lost. What this means is you can move an ant around in its anthill, or you can move a planet around a distant star, but you can't move an ant around on the planet of a distant star. Some games have approached this problem by rendering all objects relative to the camera. That's how Just Cause 2 was able to render its 400 square mile world while avoiding position problems. But the distance just from the Earth to the Sun is about 150 million kilometers, and double precision floating points only have 15 digits of resolution. So in order to render infinite space, we need another solution. So I created what I call scalable floats, which are a base 1000 number structure that can accurately add and subtract values from less than one billionth of a meter to about a dozen trillion kilometers without losing any precision when values are added together. Now we can move an ant around on the surface of Jupiter without any problems. Currently, that gives us the precision to simulate an area many times the size of our solar system without losing any accuracy, and this could easily be expanded by just adding more digits to the base 1000 number. At this point, the project is beginning to get beyond the scale that one person can handle on his own. For example, currently the planets are just perfect spheres, and to make them have beautiful terrain and collision with that terrain, there needs to be a system in place that can stream huge amounts of data in and out of memory in the GPU, which is a task that entire teams of expert programmers at the world's largest game companies have trouble with on a daily basis. This is well beyond the scope of what I can do by myself, so I've decided to open source the project. If you'd like to help in building an infinite universe game, you can find the source code on GitHub. Just look in the description of this video. If you want to learn more about some other things that I've made, you can visit my company's website at lunarworkshop.com. Or to hear what I'll be up to in the future, you can follow me on Twitter at VinoBS. Thanks for listening.